Pokemon Go has been around for seven years, which is such an amazing feat for a game that has been pretty much at the heart of bridging the casual fans to the mainline series fans and the introduction of Pokemon itself. With the innovative technology that has been implemented with this game, it's become one of the most popular mobile games on the planet. Arguably as of right now, making this video, they are a top 20 mobile game in revenues. But what if I told you that Niantic, the developing company behind this game, decided to make one drastic change that would negatively impact their money, the game, and the fan base itself. Before we jump right into it, I'd like to say thank you guys so much for all the support. Please like and subscribe. That is the best way to help out this channel. You guys really enjoyed the video where I made of why I'm worried about Generation 5 remakes. Go ahead and check out that video. It will be down below in the comment section. Before we get right into it, I'd like to say thank you to Pokemon Global News. For those of you who don't know or have a Facebook, they're pretty much one of my most reliable sources in regards to getting information out there in regards to Pokemon, whether it's changes in the anime, changes in the games, or anything that's very significant to the Pokemon company itself. I usually follow them on Facebook, and they're very informative, so shout out to them. Free advertising for them. <laughs> Anyways, let's get right into it. So, according to several revenue earning reports, Pokemon Go has taken drastic hits in the grossing revenue. So it says here, from February, they generated about 58 million, and it went pretty much down to March at 42.8 million. So that's a pretty much a 16 million dollar swing. And then one month later, it took another approximate six million dollar swing as well. Its lowest monthly total since February 2018, over five years ago. Now, it's pretty interesting to note about these earnings because there is a report going out there saying that Niantic has been really defensive about it, saying that these earning reports have been incorrect for whatever reason. And it's pretty funny if you are part of that Pokemon Go community, you know that Niantic doesn't really comment about anything such as that or any changes to the game or any feedback that they get from <laughs> any Pokemon fans from the get-go. So the fact that they had to comment on this saying that these might be incorrect is a pretty tall telling sign that something is going on within the game itself. So what's the biggest reason all this is going on right now and why it's causing a huge community uproar? Well, the one change I'm about to tell you, I think this change is going to be pretty much going to be the rest of the video due to the fact that it's trickling down into several different effects in this game is the changes of the remote raid passes. Now, remote raid passes have been around since the inception of the coronavirus. So obviously with the coronavirus pandemic, epidemic, whatever you like to call it, people weren't able to go outside. People weren't able to raid with other people. Uh, so what Pokemon Go and Niantic decided to do is they arguably created one of the biggest features of all time in the game. And that happened to be the remote raid passes and allows you to raid basically from the comforts of your home now because the coronavirus as of today is technically not a global threat anymore based on the research and the most updated data from the world health organization i think niantic decided to say you know what you guys had too much fun <laughs> so as of april 6 niantic decided to do two things one, they decided to increase the price of remote raid passes. And two, they decided to put a daily limit. So you can only raid with the remote raid passes up to five times a day. Uh, depending on if there's raid events or not, that might be bumping up to 10. But the change of prices is where the biggest uproar happened to be from the community. So, according to... A lot of people that I've played with, people I've known for years, this is pretty much was a breaking point for people who played on Pokemon Go. So, the biggest issue here, and I'm about to read some statements, you know, that was generated by the community, is as follows. So, 
people still love Pokemon Go, and that's actually true. I know a lot of people still do. I know whenever I visit a huge city like Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, or Munich, you know, other places around the world, people are still playing this game. And it's crazy. I mean, if you don't believe me, you can look at the revenues and tell me, like, hey, they're still raking millions upon millions of dollars, which is just insane that people still love this game. And I cannot blame them. It's something that, hey, if you don't have a Nintendo Switch, if you want to get yourself into Pokemon, this is probably like one of the perfect games you can have on your phone that will bridge you between, you know, Pokemon Go and eventually make your way into the mainline series. So, the first note that I wanted to bring up is that Niantic doesn't really listen to the feedback of their community. There has been some changes within the game that oftentimes the players feel like Niantic doesn't really care. Unless they implement something, they really don't really listen to feedback, which has been, again, a company versus fan base issue. Sounds familiar, right? Sounds like... Hey, Game Freak versus the fan base is something we've always hear every day. And Niantic isn't really much different from that. So, what? why are the changes very negative? Or why do they have such a negative impact? Well, the biggest people that will hurt from this are rural trainers. People who live in isolated areas that don't have access to, you know, raids. And the fact that they can only get invited to raids from other people who get invited. Trainers with disabilities. What happens if a player is disabled and cannot go outside to actual locations and they cannot raid from home? And I think it's very unfortunate that, yes, you have to address everybody. And at the same time, I feel like these people are not being, you know, helped out with such changes. And most importantly of all, the remote raid changes will limit our global interaction with our trainers who have developed tight bonds with over the last three years, which basically lines up with the pandemic. So the biggest concern is that everybody has the right to play this game through a fairly and equal opportunistic way. I think from what people have been saying you know, as I read with them over the years, they've been saying that Niantic has been taking steps backwards. Yes, they're trying to make money, but it seems like they're neglecting their fans the most. And so we're going to go on to the second part of the statement here. And I guess this is what people have been trying to implement in the games and they want Niantic to do such things. Uh, number one, pretty much with the raids, just guaranteed XL Rare Candy. And the biggest problem that I have with XL Rare Candy is that it's pretty hard to get. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love the Rare Candies because they allow you to evolve Pokemon very fast. But XL Rare Candy is very useful in order to level up your Pokemon into Behemoth. Because you do need battle-ready Pokemon in order to, one, have a chance at PvP raids. And two, wait, sorry. At one... Have a chance at pvp battles with the you know great league ultra league master league and to allows you to have better pokemon to raid against another change that they want to see is increased lucky friend odds during first time in-person raid interaction that way it can you know allow people to have an incentive to raid more hey if you want more raids you want people to buy your passes Give us more stuff that we care about. Make our lives easier. Offer premium items such as incubators, star pieces, etc. from in-person raids. Basically having a better reward system. I feel like that's probably going to be the first superficial way of justifying why prices of raids are increasing and at the same time limiting the amount of raids. And it says right here, the next bullet point, incentivize the in-person raids but do not take away the squander of what we've built globally over the last three plus years. Without remote raids, the opportunity to attend live events to meet with our global Pokemon Go friends will not be enticing, exciting, or robust. So I think this is the breaking point of people in the community saying, hey, you gotta listen to us, Niantic, because at the very least, we 
as the community are the ones that are buying in item game in game items and to going to events now pokemon go fest is about a couple months away i'm very curious to see whether people are not buying those tickets for the go fest because again that's still a pretty big chunk of revenue that they could potentially miss out and so with that i think that's pretty much it for this video uh when it comes to pokemon go i still play it every now and then heck i almost play it every other day because i love completing the pokedex and i love meeting actual people who have become friends over the years because of pokemon go and it does really bring people together it's just unfortunate that again we we see oftentimes again and again gaming companies have no idea what they're doing and yes they're in it for the money but they neglect the very fans that keep the game alive but let me know what you guys think it's your boy franklin signing out peace